Good evening, kids. Good evening, parents, chess teachers. Uh, welcome back to the chess lesson. In today's game, uh, Fischer versus uh, Bolbo Khan, played in 1962, we'll talk about uh, the strategy of the backward pawn and uh, how to trade the pieces. You will see that um, in this game, knight was superior comparing to the bishop. So we have this opening that is called Sicilian defense. And this Sicilian defense we call Nidorf Sicilian defense with a6. There are many other Sicilian defenses like this one that's called Dragon or Scheveningen or a classical uh, Sicilian defense. Um, now, of course, there are many other Sicilians, you know, if you start instead of D6 with an E6, like Sveshnikov, for instance, or Accelerate Dragon. Well, this Sicilian defense, A6, is very popular and uh, one of the, the best openings that you can play with a black side. What can white do here? Bobby Fischer played very unusual move, h3. Now, in many games, he played bishop to c4. That's really an extremely sharp move. Bishop g5 is one of the best ways you can play this position. And of course, um, um, you can also play like bishop to e3, and f3 and g4, that's called English attack, or you can play here bishop e3 and bishop d3 and f4 and uh, go into uh, into like attacking positions with a, with a wide side. Now, what is the idea of this move h3? Well, white wants to push pawn to g4 and take the space on the king side. White is not concerned about opening up the king um, because uh, the king could run into the queen side castling. So h3 is the move that uh, many other grandmasters uh, are uh, using in their games. It's, it's becoming quite popular one. Knight c6, pawn to g4, and here black takes. Queen takes and e5. Well, this move e5 is going to remove the queen from the center of the board. But there are problems with that move. And the biggest problem is the pawn on d6. Pawn on d6 is called a backward pawn. And it is like an isolated pawn not protected with any other pawn, and he cannot move forward. Now, the space in front of the, the backward pawn, the space d5, is very weak. And the strategy that, that white is going to try to do is to, to land with the knight to d5, but not by trading those knights. We'll try to remove the, sorry about this. Uh, we'll try to remove the knight from f6 and then then land on d5. And let's see how Bobby Fischer does that. Bishop e7, g5, knight e7. And still, white still doesn't want to move the knight to d5 because uh, um, he can he can do it later, right? Um, bishop e3. Well, knight c5, and uh, here queen d2. Bishop e6, and and now castling castling f3. Right. So so the pawn on e4 is protected. Black cannot push pawn to d5. That's very important. Pay attention to the bishop on e7. It's not doing very well. Right? This bishop on e7 um, is a little bit blocked. 
right? It, it is protecting the pawn on d6, but it's not a very active piece. But look at this strategy right now. Rook c8, and uh, what Bobby Fischer plays here as the move king b1. And he actually wrote in, uh, in the comments of this game that a lot of people cannot understand this kind of move. Uh, it's a preventive move. He's, he's uh, moving the king out of the danger uh, because the rook is on c5 and it could be dangerous. Right? Also, sometimes when you make a trade, so it could be a check. Like, uh, let's say, you know, in some positions, like when you capture on g5, it could be a check on c1. So it's really a preventive move. Um, uh, and uh, you uh, you want to learn those kind of moves. Um, for instance, uh, in dragon defense, you will have this kind of move, king b1. Now, knight d7. And uh, here we, we, we start with a strategical move, h4. The idea of h4 is not only to protect the pawn, but also to play bishop h3 and trade the bishop on e6. Now, I'm sure you know why do we trade the bishop on e6. Because the bishop on e6 is protecting the, the square d5. And if you remove that bishop, then the knight is going to be very comfortable in that outpost on d5. And that's exactly what happened. Bishop h3. Bishop takes, rook takes, and now knight b6. And here we, we get to, to, to our next trade. Those are the, the kind of trades you, you have to learn. Bishop takes the knight. So now, look, if someone asks you what is a stronger piece, bishop or a knight, you have to tell them that uh, depends on the position. Because uh, um, in this case, Knight is a stronger piece, so so you want to play uh, the move uh, a bishop to b6. Remove the knight and then jump to d5. Well, Bobby Fischer uh, wrote in a, in, a, in a comments of this game that this game is already lost for black. It is strategically won for the white. Of course. For Bobby Fischer, that's winning game, but we still have to learn how to do that, right? So, so knight on d5 is superior comparing to bishop on e7. It is on the white color, and it cannot be uh, removed from d5. So those kind of positions are very um, are useful to know because they happen very often on the chessboard, but... You cannot win this game just because you have the knight on d5. You have to, to create uh, um, the action on a queen side or a king side. That knight can only support uh, the attack. Right? But just by sitting there on d5 and not doing anything, it's not going to help. Queen d8, f4. Pawn takes, queen takes, and queen f5. Why queen f5? What is the reason that that Bobby Fischer is trying to to um, I mean trade the queen here? The trade doesn't work anyway because there is an in between move ninety seven check and then you would take. But even if it if the king would be on h8, like what is the reason that white wants to trade a queen? It is because uh, the end game is so bad for, for black with a bishop on e7 comparing to that knight on d5. Rook d8, rook a3. Look at that small. So that's what I was telling you before. You need to create some kind of action. It's not enough just to have a knight on d5 and be inactive, like action is important here. Rook c3, look at this move. Um, the rook wants to go to c7. 
g6 and here rook c7 rook e8 knight f4 and rook d5 but it's it's uh, uh, difficult really difficult for black to play this position um now what happened is that uh, rook got into that outpost to d5 instead of the knight right but pay attention to all the white pieces they are really uh, very active and especially the rook on c7 it's an extremely difficult uh, to play any kind of move with the black pieces look at the black pieces on the back rank and h6 pawn takes h5 okay so now you can see also the reason for the rook on d5 it's supporting the attack pawn takes and here queen b3 now there is a there is an option for a discovered attack rook e5 and uh, after this move uh, black resigned the game because um, after king e6 you have um, queen uh, queen to e6 and uh, and after this move queen to c8 and the checkmate is happening well let's see what are the most important moves in this game first um if you are playing with a wide side and you play against neither defense and if you don't have any kind of uh moves then why don't you try a h3 it is going to surprise your opponents very nice way to play you just remember this game g4 is important move then we have this idea of um putting the, the like king b1 is important moving the king out of the danger and then of course the strategy starts here with bishop h3 bishop b6 is important move you want to trade the bishop for a knight so the the knight can go to d5 and then uh, i i like also the the move like uh, here rook a3 and rook c3 those are important moves this change of the the, the change of the rook and the the knight in the outpost and then uh and then you have here you can analyze this position a little bit more by yourself see uh see what's happening uh, in this position like there is a lot of tactics uh, uh going on in this position uh, so you can you can pay pay um, a little bit attention to to everything that is going on here you know take a couple of minutes just to to look at this game um and uh and study more that could be for homework well that's what's important and then of course this small queen b3 on the end is what what is deciding the game All right so so we have really strategical game uh um wonderful uh, uh strategy that bobby fisher is teaching us in in this game okay cats i hope you enjoyed this lesson and um then we'll see each other again tomorrow bye bye